Hello and welcome to the exam one review. This review is better than the other review because you know sometimes as teachers things just go a little differently. You see things differently, you want to show things differently. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, the first concept you have to know is the difference between categorical data sets and quantitative data sets. I think um, as a whole you guys are good on that. Know the chapter two terms on page 15. This is the only time that um, you'll have to memorize definitions, even though you should be comfortable with all the terms from every chapter. You don't necessarily have to memorize them. You should be able to look at them and at least be able to talk about them. Okay, given a contingency table, find find table, marginal, and uh, conditional percents. We've been doing that. This is what percent of the students rode on the bus, what percent of male students didn't ride the bus, that type of stuff. Okay, given data on one categorical data set, be able to do a frequency, frequency or counts, counts, relative frequency or percents, or decimals, or fractions. You could do it either way. Okay, <clears throat> all three of those are good. The same thing applies to a pie chart. If you have a pie chart, okay, something like that, and you have percents in here, it's a relative frequency pie chart. Okay, but if you have counts in here, if you have, um, let's say 30, 20, and uh, 50, it's not the scale, but that would be a count. This would be a, if you have percents in here, that would be a relative frequency. Same thing with a bar graph. You have a choice. You either could do counts or you could do percents. If you do counts, we call it a frequency bar graph. If you do percents, we call it a relative frequency bar graph. Okay? So this is going to be the free response, response question. This is worth 40 points. This here is worth, uh, not 40 points, that's worth 50 points. This here is worth 50 points, okay? Okay, this is gonna be one huge, big free response question, okay? So I'm gonna give the data, I'm gonna give the data, and you are going to, the first thing you're gonna do with the data is make a contingency table. The next thing you do, that, okay, so that's the first thing you have to do, contingency table. Then I'm going to ask a bunch of questions, questions similar to these right here. Give, okay, because now you, but you have to build this first. You have to build, you have to build the contingency table, okay, for the free response. Up here you'll be given it. So you're going to be questions about the percents. Okay, there you're going to have to, you're going to have to construct a marginal a marginal distribution okay for either or or both you have to do a conditional okay I did conditionals the, uh, the last couple of days you can do a conditional just on one on one of the uh, categories okay but when I say conditional you just find either all the row row conditionals or the the column conditionals and I'm going to show you how I'm going to word that so everybody does the same one. Construct a side-by-side -side bar graph and to determine if the two variables may be independent. Okay so I'm going to pause and I'm going to make a question. We're going to do the whole, a whole free response all the way through. I'm back and we have a problem on the next page <coughs> that we're going to go ahead and do all these um, all these things on. Okay, the NRA is interested in learning if gender and owning a weapon is are independent. They randomly choose 567 adults and ask them whether or not they own at least one gun. Out of the 562 adults, 310 were males. Out of 310 males, 217 of them own at least one gun. Out of, of the females of the group, 75 said they own at least one gun. So let's go ahead and set up our contingency table. Now remember, we there's only two there's only two categorical variables here. 
Okay, remember the categories. Each category is not a <laughs> categorical variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and put gender over here. And these do they don't matter which way you do it. Gun ownership. So it could be at least one or or it could be none. For the gender it could be male or female. So let me put my lines in there. Constructing this. Okay, good, good, good. Need one more here for the total. Let's see if I could get on there. I guess I don't need those. I'll write those smaller. So this is my total for my rows. And this is the total for my columns. So let's go ahead and start this off by putting the total total in the bottom right. Okay, so how many males do I have? I have 310 males. Okay, so if I have 310 males, the rest of them are females. So all I have to do to find that is just to 562 minus 310. There's 252 females. Okay, so out of these 310, how many said they own at least one gun? So it looks like 217. 217, so to get this, I just do 310 minus 217. That's the rest. No, not 97, but 93. So 217 plus 93 will give you this. Okay, out of the females of the group, which are 252, okay, 75 said they own at least one gun, so it's 75. The rest of these, the rest leading up to 252 don't, so it's 252 minus 75 equals. Now sum this up, sum this up to get my column totals 217 plus 75, 292, 177 plus 93 was 270. So a good thing to do is add this and add this to make sure that it's 562. Good. And this is going to work because that's how I found the other one. Good. So this that's your contingency table, okay? Okay, so now let's do this. What percent of adults owned at least one gun? So this is my who. I have 562 adults owned at least one gun. So how many owned at least one gun? Here's at least one gun, 292. So 292 over 562. This is a marginal percent. It's a marginal percent. What percent of adults were females? What percent of adults were female? So that's how many adults. Okay, so I had 562. How many females did I have? 252. This is another marginal. Okay, if I get the percent from these margins, it's called a marginal. For these totals, it's a marginal. What percent of females owned at least one gun? What percent of females owned at least one gun? So this is the important thing here. I'm interested in the females. So how many females did I have? I had 252 females. Out of these 252, how many owned a gun? 75. Okay, so this is a conditional. A conditional. Okay, row percent. It's a conditional percent for the rows. Among the adults that own at least one gun, what fraction of those were female? Okay, so among the adults who own at least one gun, so how many own at least one gun? 292. That goes in the bottom. Out of these 292, what fraction of those were female? 75. Okay. What percent of males do not own at least one gun? What percent of males? So I'm interested in the males. So how many males do I have? 310. Out of these males, how many do not own at least one gun? Males, no gun, 93. Okay, so those are those. Construct 
the marginal distribution of gun ownership. So I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to do a relative frequency table. Okay, so there's only two possibilities. Here, let me write it in math terms so it'll be shorter. At least one is a greater than or equal to sine and a one. This is none, and this would be percent. Okay, so I'll go ahead and find the percent. Gun ownership, what percentage? See, gun ownership. So this would be the margins on these, these t column totals. So even though it says percent, you're allowed to do a fraction. So, or you could do it in a percent, it's up to you. 292 over 562. And uh, let's go with uh, 270 over 562. None. So it was close to half of them had guns and half of them didn't have guns. Okay, see that's hard to see from this data up here. Okay, so let me do something real quick because I think I'm going to have to take this data with me. Okay, I'm back. Construct a conditional distribution of gun ownership among males and females. Okay, so what we could do, instead of writing the whole thing over, you could just cut this, you could cut this and write the percents in there. Okay, I'm not sure if this will erase. Let me see if this will erase. Yeah, it will erase. Okay, so I'm just going to erase these. Okay. So instead of writing, technically these should probably be percents too, this over this and this over this, but we'll just, we'll just leave it for now. So the conditional percent, okay, would be, um, here, let me do this. Some more cutting out, so I'm going to do a divided by. Okay, so if I want the distribution of gun ownership, so I'm I'm doing um, the top. Okay, but it's among who? Among who? So these are my who's. This is my who's. So these need to be in the denominator. That tells you. That tells you if you're doing a row or a column. So we're going to do a row. Row percent. You see. That's how I'm going to ask it. Construct a conditional distribution of something among somebody else. Whoever it's among is going to be going in your denominator. So since the, de since the denominators are over here, this is going to be 27 divided by 310. And 93 divided by 310. And 75 divided by 252. And 177 divided by 252. Now we, we do want to get these percents. Okay, we want to put these in percents. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and do that. We want to get these in percent. So two one seven divided by three ten. So that's seventy percent. So this is a conditional percent. So if that's seventy. This has to be thirty, because this plus this has to equal this. Okay. Now let's go to this one seventy five over two fifty two. So about thirty percent. I'll just round it. So this must be 70%. Okay? So it's just kind of like backwards of each other. So the conditional distribution of gun ownership would be this. That's it right there. Among males and females. These are this is it. 70%, 30%, 30%, 70%. Switched up. Okay? So that's the distribution. If I said give me the conditional conditional of gun ownership for males that would just be males at least one and none this is how you do it and that would be 70 percent and 30 <laughs> percent that's it okay it's the conditional among male for males for males among males Okay, if I said give me the conditional for females, you'd write an F, at least one, none. Okay, and it would be 30% and 70%.
Okay, so let's do our side by side. Let's do our side by side bar graph. I always put the who's in the on the x axis. The who go on the x axis. So the who is the males and the females. So I'm going to put my male there, my female there, and that would be gender. Write your key. Write your key for the other for the other one which would be gun ownership. Okay? So we have this would be at least one and this one here is going to be gun ownership is for both would be none okay so let's switch up the colors a little bit I'm gonna make that 50 percent that's already there okay so what percent of males had gun ownership what percent of males had gun ownership what percent of males had gun ownership? 70%. Okay, so I need to go to that color and go up to 70%. What percent of females, or I'm sorry, what percent of males did not have it? Did not have it. That would be 30%. 30%. That's 50. 70. Okay. What percent of females had gun ownership? So that would be 30, or had at least one. What percent of females didn't? So this is just like backwards. So what you want to do for independence is you want to compare, you want to compare, we did a row. So if you do a row percent for conditionals, for conditionals, we want to compare this is important. We want to compare the column, the column percents. If they're different, that implies not independent. If they're about the same, within, say, 1%, then they are probably independent okay so look at this one you want to compare the height of this one with the height of this one or this one with this one are they the same no males are more likely to own a, at least one gun than females okay so you'd say since males are more likely to own at least one gun compared to the females gender and gun ownership is probably not independent because because gun ownership depended on what gender you were okay so that's it that's the review um, if you could do these you should be you should be fine okay and just as a note if you end up watching this but you should um, make sure you study your who's and your what's in the variables because I'm thinking I may I may put a couple questions in multiple choice okay so um, that's a possibility alright so um, thanks for watching and have a nice day